you, Mr. President. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We are extremely lucky today. I want to thank all of you coming from uh, around the world and from our campus. We're lucky to have with us uh, President uh, Nana Akufoado, uh, uh, and I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. But I want to say just a quick word about why Ghana is so remarkable and important for all of the topics we're going to be discussing today and tomorrow. Ghana has pioneered for the whole world, and the lessons from Ghana have now been adopted by all of Africa because of how powerful and persuasive the results are. And that is the community-based delivery of health care, especially with the community health workers. We have uh, some uh, models uh, on the, the, the table. They have made possible today a gift of 6,000 smartphones for the community health workers. This is on the way to universal ICT applications across the board. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, these are people saving millions of lives. Please give them a big hand. Hi. Hello. 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 Thank you. Hi. Is that sir? No, sir. No, no, no. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are, Jennifer, why don't you hand over uh, one of the 6,000 phones on the way? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> My duty, and that of all the members of the Advocates Group, is to help mobilize political support for the realization of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals which include ending poverty and hunger, improving health and education, making cities more sustainable, combating climate change, and protecting oceans and forests. All of these are aimed at promoting global development that leaves no one behind. Truth be told, the full implementation of the SDGs in Africa cannot be done with a mindset of dependence. This has to change. And it begins with identifying our priorities and implementing them. Our first priority must be to change the structures of the economies on the continent, which are dependent largely on the production and export of raw materials. It is this reliance on raw materials that feeds our dependence on foreign aid and subjects us to the politics of the West. We cannot be doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Africa needs to transform stagnant, jobless economies built on the export of raw materials and unrefined goods to value-added economies that provide jobs, to build strong middle-class societies and lift the masses of our people out of dire poverty. To guarantee an Africa beyond aid, Africa must breed a new generation of leaders. Leaders who are committed to governing their peoples according to the rule of law, respect for individual liberties and human rights, and the principles of democratic accountability. Leaders who are looking past commodities to position their countries in the global marketplace. Leaders who are determined to free their peoples from a mindset of dependence, aid, charity and handouts. Leaders who are bent on mobilizing Africa's own immeasurable resources to resolve Africa's problems. Leaders who recognize the connectedness of their peoples and economies to those of their neighbors. This new generation of African leaders must help bring dignity and prosperity to our continent and its peoples. Once again, I thank you sincerely for making me a part of this conversation. Thank you and may God bless you.